the money to marker i call him money call him money uh, has been tested very well now it's time it's time to make the test of the rst first also the air one with the lockout remote uh, but just on the way I'm going to show you how to replace the fork on your bike, how to cut the steerer and how to make the new fork work for you very well. Your new fork has to fit to the frame and its geometry and second to the wheel you've got on your bike. So number one, the frame. The steering tube or so-called steerer cannot be too short. It has to at least reach to your to the upper edge of your stem maybe you're gonna put your stem a little bit higher maybe you want to change position on your bike into more comfortable position then then you would like to have your steer a bit longer as you can see i still have three spacers here and that means i could put those under the stem and then the stem goes up uh, but if you want to just uh, keep it like this you could just uh, cut the steer right here uh, I haven't done this because this is testing bike and I'm gonna give it back just like that so measure the steerer of your fork and then you know how long steerer of the new fork has to be if you're buying a new one 99% it's gonna be too long which is good you're gonna just cut it where you want but if you're buying a used one that means somebody's head tube could be shorter than the one on your bike uh, and then it could be just uh, cut uh, too short and you would, uh, you would uh, come up with just uh, too short steer on your bike. So especially on the used fork, make sure it's not too short. The second thing is the shape of your, the diameter of your uh, steering tube. As you can see here, we've got tapered system. So the upper uh, bearing here will be 118 inch the bottom one will be 1.5 so this one will fit sometimes you have 118 by 118 sometimes it won't be 118 1.5 but but 118 and 138 or so uh, so make sure you know what kind of bearings you are using and then you know whether it's a tapered system and what kind of tapered or is it just straight one if you're not using a suspension fork maybe it's a classic road bike that might be for example one inch steerer you can use some adapters for your uh, for your headset then but just make sure originally what kind of headset would be uh, on your frame and then you know exactly what steerer would be perfect for you now for the geometry you need to know uh, all the measurements of the fork whether it's a suspension fork or a rigid fork you need to know uh, the rake and the offset of your fork it's all in the geometry charts uh, because you are changing the geometry you can for example change the wheelbase when changing the offset of your uh, fork that's one thing uh, and you need to know what the standard of your axle is it the through axle or quick release uh, how wide it is or how long the axle is uh, all these measurements you need to know and of course what wheels you have is it 26 inch is it 700 c is it 29er and 27.5 plus or is it 27.5 so that measurement you also uh, need to know and make sure you have the right clearance you would want on your um, uh, tires spe especially on the road bikes uh, you need to make sure your tires will fit of course we also need to remember about the type of the mounting uh, for your brakes can be post mount for example for the disc brakes it can be direct mount for the caliper brakes uh, on your road bike or just on the pivot so make sure it is compatible you can sometimes use different adapters just make sure you're gonna find these adapters and these systems will be compatible my fork has been measured it fits to the bike let's replace it first we remove the wheel it might also be very helpful to use the transportation insert here uh, in this way we make sure we not we're not gonna mess up with our uh, front brake because remember never use the brake when the wheel isn't in it then we remove the caliper of the brake make sure you don't change the order of these three now we're going to remove the housing of the front brake from our fork
Now it's time for the remote lockout. In this case we also need to remove the grip. Now these two bolts which mount the stem onto the steerer. And as the last one, this bolt, the headset bolt, but remember when we unscrew this one, uh, the fork will fall off. The old one, the new one. Uh, in case you don't want to change anything, you just replace the fork, you simply measure the steerer, in this case 170 millimeters, you mark it on the new steerer, cut it, uh, then uh, put the, uh, the anchor and that's it. But I'm going to show you how to do it if you, for example, build the bike from the scratch and you don't have the fork just yet, you need to make sure what kind of length will be suitable for you. Before you proceed with another step, you need to clean the upper bearing, the bottom bearing, the headset uh, and grease it. Make sure the whole system, the whole environment here is clean because once you've opened it, uh, it would be much easier for the sand and dirt to get into your bearings and that could be costly, you don't want that. Remember about the order of all parts if you're gonna put those on the table. Just like new one. Can you see how the head tube is being welded to the top tube? We want to have all this here clean. There is always more dirt and mud at the bottom. I'm not putting the grease on the headset system uh, just yet because uh, I want to have my, all my parts clean when I'm just measuring uh, the new steerer. For the measuring we need all the parts uh, already set so I need to remove this um, bearing race from the old fork. One additional note, I did scratch this old fork a little bit when removing the race, the bearing race, so it would be much better to use my screwdriver like that with the cloth. Now I'm just checking whether my bearing race got 100% to its place and it's sitting nicely and straight and that's the case. I'm prepared for taking the measurements, uh, all the bearings are in, uh, I have all the parts I'm gonna use for this uh, headset and uh, the handlebar height. So now I'm gonna just mark where to cut. I'm just holding all this in place uh, with this little bolt just in order to show you. Uh, I'm 100% sure that all the bearings, both bearings are in place, everything in, is in place, so just as it would be during the ride. And now I'm gonna um, just mark the upper edge of the stem, knowing that my steer must be a little bit shorter. But here is the upper edge. Here is the marking, I'm gonna cut the steer about 5 millimeters lower, so shorter than marked. So here is the marking and I'm going a little bit down, like that. Thank you. 
This is the star nut inside of our old fork and this is the new one you have to buy additionally for your new fork and you have to put this one inside the new steering tube don't reuse the old one it's a very good idea to use this protection for your dropouts if you don't have it just use a couple of rags we want to put this one inside uh, maybe like 13 millimeters deep into the steering tube I'm gonna use special tool for that if you don't use any tool uh, just make sure it goes straight down uh, more info on that I'm showing you in another tutorial Now I'm gonna clean my fork very thoroughly. Uh, I don't want any pieces of metal right here. And then my headset is already clean. I'm gonna put some grease there. The grease down here on the bearing race will make additional like a sealant for the water for the dirt for the winter if you're gonna use it your bike in the winter so i'm putting quite a lot here Here is how it looks like. The star nut is inside. I'm using the spacers, but whether you're using those or not, uh, this, these spacers will give me chance in the future option to change the um, height of the handlebars. Uh, but whether you, you use those or not, as you can see, the upper edge of the spacer or the stem has to be a couple of millimeters uh, higher than the upper edge of your steering tube so that this cup and bolt will actually compress one against another. We are not screwing in these bolts first, this one has to be first. You're gonna see how the fork goes up. Once I feel resistance here, I'm just checking whether it works very smoothly. Yeah, this is cool. And whether there is a play or not, I'm gonna check out uh, when after installing the front wheel. So far, we are stopping here, and these bolts I'm gonna screw those in after checking out with the front wheel whether there is play or not. It's time for the remote lockout. This fork comes with one. Now we need to decide how to route the housing. Uh, and I see already that it should be going from the outside of the lockout lever housing. Then we've got here some nice routing, so it will come here and then on the inside of the lower extension and to the caliper mount like this. A longer bolt. This is a Chucky Beat production. Shorter bolt. Let's leave it like this. In order to center my caliper, I'm just braking with this front brake and I'm gonna screw those bolts in. Now with the bike on the floor, I'm braking with the front brake, checking for any play on the lower bearing and the upper bearing, there is no play. Then I'm checking whether the steering is smooth and easy. Yes, it is. Now I can just straighten my bars. Now I can assemble the stem to the steering tube with those two bolts.
the job is done, the fork is there, the remote lockout is there, bike is ready to go and tomorrow there is a race so I'm gonna try how this RST first fork works. Let us know how you did with your fork replacement, I'm gonna meet you in the comments, bye bye.